imagine you made something, something you were proud of, something you wanted to show other people, and maybe it's something you even want to sell. However, as you're getting ready to sell this thing, something happens. You get an email from your publisher saying that this thing you made needs to be changed or else it won't be published, either in a specific region or maybe just not at all. Gosh be darn it, you've been censored! Or at least that's what you're going to tell yourself as you're writing out your part 1 of 56 Twitter rant. Censorship is a bit of a delicate topic in the sense that people will absolutely lose their minds over it if they ever get a whiff that something has been censored. And it's also something that exists in all forms of media to varying capacities. Today, however, I'm mostly going to be talking about censorship and its relationship to video games, more specifically what is, what isn't, and whether or not I think it should exist at all. Anyway, like I said before, censorship can be kind of a delicate subject for some people, so all I'm asking is that you wait until the end before you decide if you agree or disagree with anything I'm saying. You can then write a comment saying if I'm right, or you can say if I'm just a moron. It's your choice. Anyway, let's talk about f***ing censorship. Hey, uh, could you please not do that? It's kind of a pain on me. Let me guess, um... Sensor Fox. Sensor Fox, yeah, yeah. You're the one who's been doing the bleeping this whole time? I thought that was me. Uh, of course, with the YouTube adpocalypse going on right now, we gotta be very careful what kind of content we put out, otherwise we won't be able to get advertisements and get that sweet AdSense money. I mean, I kinda thought we did that for comedic effect. Well, we do, but this is a lot more topical. Do games need censorship? Let's go! Before we get too far into this, it's probably important to go ahead and talk about what censorship really is. Censorship, by definition, is the suppression or prohibition of any part of books, films, news, etc. that are considered obscene, politically unacceptable, or a threat to security. In other words, it's whether an institution believes that specific content in some sort of media is unacceptable by their standards, whatever they are, so they cut these things out when they see them. The key word that I'm using here is institution. You see, when it comes to video games, people often get censorship mixed up with a different, albeit somewhat similar practice called localization. Censorship in its broadest terms is when rules and regulations dictate that some part of the content in question needs to be altered in order to fit their parameters. So, for example, if there's a law that dictates that these extreme depictions of blood and violence are not allowed in the country, any video product that depicts those things will have to be altered in order for it to be released. Australia in particular is a known offender of this. They're a country known for many things, like kangaroos, the outback, and backwards, overly conservative laws of depictions of violence that have led to many a game either being heavily censored or barred from being sold in the country at all. Though these laws regarding violent games seem to have lessened in recent years as more and more violent games are being released down there. Video games do not hurt anybody. And the government and the government classification board should leave video gamers alone. And sometimes it's not just violence and sex that tips off the censors, it can even get political. Prime example is with the new Wolfenstein games, made by Machine Games and produced by Bethesda. These games tell the story of an alternate history where the Nazis win World War II, and you have to play as the chiseled Lantern Law of Justice and guttural growler BJ Blazkowicz to fight against the Nazis and free the world from their tyranny. You do this as violently as possible, whether it be from quietly slitting Nazi throats or mowing them down using dual-wielded auto shotguns and turning them into Aryan meat pinatas. Surprisingly enough, Wolfenstein The New Order got through Australia's censors with nothing more than the equivalent to the M rating that it would receive here in the United States, and it didn't have anything altered or cut. The blood, the language, and even the brief sexy bits were all left in. And yet the game didn't remain unaltered in another part of the world, namely Germany. The German version of Wolfenstein The New Order also had its more graphic content kept the same, but there were still numerous changes to the game upon release, specifically everything that identified the antagonists as being Nazis, including the word Nazi. The reason this was done was because Germany has very strict laws about Nazis, including the banning of symbols, slogans, gestures, and more. Trying to use any of these things in Germany can and will land you in prison. And when you consider the history that they have with these things, it's kind of hard to blame them. So as a result, Bethesda had to change several things in order to get the game released in Germany. For starters, all images of swastikas were replaced, as were other symbols such as the SS officer emblem. Furthermore, the Nazis were no longer referred to as the Nazis, nor was there any mention of Hitler. Instead, they were all just called the regime. Other than that, the game was kept the same. 
It can be a bit dicey whenever this happens for a company because having to change so much can risk altering the product to the point where it's basically not even the same thing anymore. But in this type of situation, their hands are tied because if they don't change the content in question, they won't be able to sell the product in that region and that can hurt their sales. However, even if changing something in the game is not required by law, a lot of time companies will still do it anyway so they can better cater a product to a region's demographic. And what's done this way is referred to as localization. Localization is exactly what I just said it is. It's when a company decides to alter their product in a way that will make it more appealing to a specific foreign audience. Obviously, the most well-known examples of this deal with any time Japan brings something over to the United States, but it does also work in reverse when we send our stuff over there. The biggest difference between censorship and localization is that in the latter's case, nobody is forcing the creator to change their product. They are removing dialogue or cutting out sexy bits because the country had regulations against that. They're just doing it because they feel like leaving those things in will hurt the sales. The range of what localization covers is pretty vast. It can be something major like removing entire scenes and altering a game's script, or just putting in angry eyebrows on Kirby because apparently someone thinks that kids won't want to play as the puffball unless he's a hard ass. This is often still referred to as censorship by a lot of people, and that's not entirely incorrect to call it that, but the point is that this is still a decision being made by the company that is in charge of distributing the product, not some outside force that's demanding they change these things, lest they not be allowed a spot at the table. If you want a prime example of a company that does this to a notable degree, look no further than good old Nintendo, everybody's childhood maker. Nintendo alters content in their Western releases all the time, something that has gotten a lot of attention in recent years. Good examples with Fire Emblem, their long-running strategy RPG game, or for a more recent example, their game Fire Emblem Fates. I talked about it very briefly in my review of Fates, but when the game was brought to Western shores, several things were either altered or removed, most notably the face-petting mechanic, where you can invite your army members up to your personal quarters and then rub their faces to raise affection with them and get unique dialogue. And as I said before, everyone thought this was weird. So when Nintendo brought this game to the West, they decided to alter it so you don't pet people's faces when they come up to your room, you just hang out. There were a bunch of other things that got changed for Fates' Western release too, like entire dialogue chains that were altered and the ages of certain characters being changed. You know the ones. Regardless, the main point of what I'm trying to say is that with all of this is that all the changes that Nintendo decided to make were made internally. There was no outside player forcing Nintendo to change these things during localization. Nintendo did this of their own free will based on knowledge of their targeted market. And they've done this with lots of other games over the years too, like Xenoblade Chronicles X, where they edited the 13-year-old party member's swimwear outfits to be less revealing, or removing the boob slider that was available when creating a custom female character. And there always tends to be a question that comes up with these changes. Why? If nobody was forcing Nintendo to change these things about their own game, then why did they? They could have easily had released the game as it is with the dialogue mostly unaltered, save for some translation fixes. So why didn't they? The answer is simple. Marketing. Nintendo of America prides themselves as being seen as a family company. And I'm not making the tired joke of Nintendo is for casuals or something equally as cliche or unfunny, but it is true that they mostly aim broad. While Nintendo has always possessed some pockets of games that were geared at older audiences and even have quite a few T games, for the most part Nintendo has always marketed itself as being a company that the whole family can enjoy. To that end, it's very rare for Nintendo to release games that are geared specifically for mature audiences. Any games that come over that might have questionable bits will often be toned down for the Western release so they don't get any press backlash. Bioware may not have minded Fox News talking about Mass Effect, but I'm pretty sure that Nintendo would not want to end up on the O'Reilly Factor. Nintendo just doesn't view themselves as that kind of company, so they stay away from it. They still want to release the games over here for the profits, but without the controversy. And of course, people still push back anyway when these changes are discovered, but having people get angry out for taking out a boob slider versus having media outlets get angry over parents thinking they brought some weird anime porn game into their house for their kids is something that Nintendo is willing to put up with. Alright, so now we've clearly laid out what censorship and localization are, so I guess we should go ahead and answer the question that we presented at the beginning. Do games need censorship? And my answer is no. However, I do believe that above all, how context is handled determines how much censorship actually affects the game. 
Now I'm aware this opinion is coming from someone who is in their 20s, has no kids, and lives in a part of the world where I'm free to say pretty much wherever I want without fear of the government coming to throw me in a gulag. Still, I believe that censoring content in games is kind of silly, especially when context dictates how we view a game in the end anyway. To clarify on this, we look at the Wolfenstein example again. Germany's strict anti-Nazi laws prevent the game from showing any kind of Nazi symbols, language, or even referring to the villains as Nazis. And again, the reason for this is because Germany is really sick of fascism. They don't want to give any sort of foothold for that kind of ideology to spring up again in their country no matter how small it is. However, with a game like Wolfenstein, I find it kind of weird that these things need to be censored considering that the game in no way paints Nazis as sympathetic. This is a game where we see Nazis forcing us to choose to have someone have their brain cut out. A game where we watch Nazis killing helpless mental patients in an asylum. A game where we, the player, get to slaughter these assholes in mass in tons of fun and creative ways. If Germany is afraid of these symbols being used to promote the Nazi ideology and fascism, I don't really see how that's happening here. I can't really see how followers of these things will be playing this game. Those idiots would much rather spend their time marching around with tiki torches and complaining on Twitter how Bethesda are now catering to SJW since they're making a game about killing Nazis. This is seriously the world we live in now. Just changing the symbols doesn't really change anything else about the game. It reminds me of that old lesson about film, that if you turn off the audio while watching a movie and you can still understand what's happening, then it means that the story is conveyed well by what is shown and not said. It's kind of the same thing with Wolfenstein. If you remove all the Nazi imagery, everything else is still left intact. The antagonists are still irredeemable, inhuman monsters that we want and need to defeat. Just because we are now calling them the regime doesn't really change anything else on how we view them. So what was even the point of the censorship? Now all that being said, I think the question of do games need localization is a bit more of a complicated issue to tackle. My answer to this question is yes, they do, but it's because localization is a lot more than just covering up cleavage. For example, how a game's script is handled is very important during localization, because cut and paste translations make you end up with something like this. Main screen turn on. It's you. How are you gentlemen? All your base are belong to us. You are on the way to destruction. What you say? Above all, I don't always like it when a company localizes something by altering major content, but at the very least I can often understand it a bit better depending on the context. Let's go off my earlier example of Fire Emblem Fates, and honestly just Fire Emblem in general, because this is a notable series of Nintendos that often has several things changed when it gets translated to English. Before Fates came out, there was a bit of a controversy surrounding a character named Soleil and her support with the male version of the main character, Corrin. Not gonna go too deep into this, but basically Soleil is a bisexual character that gets really nervous around cute girls, and there's quite a few of those in your army, so she needs help overcoming that fear. In the Japanese version of the game, Corrin decides to help by slipping Soleil a potion without her knowledge that makes all the men in the army appear as cute girls, and vice versa, so that Soleil can get used to talking to members of the same sex when she's thinking they're the opposite. Anyway, when this whole scene got leaked online, the internet kind of blew up over it for a bit, with Corrin slipping Soleil a potion without her knowledge being compared to slipping a girl a date rape drug, and the whole scenario being compared to gay conversion therapy since Soleil can end up marrying Corrin after the whole affair, whereas she can't actually end up in a relationship with any women. Regardless, this scene was kind of a mess and would never have translated well, which is why it was changed when it was officially released in the West. The plot of the scene was largely the same, Soleil gets blubbery around cute girls and can't concentrate, so Corrin decides to help her out. However, instead of drugging her with a Rule 63 potion, they just put a blindfold over her eyes and tell Soleil to pretend that they're a girl so that she can practice talking to them and get over her problem. And more importantly, Soleil actually agrees to this instead of Corrin doing it without her consent. So in this particular case, the scene was changed from its original dialogue to be less creepy and with less unfortunate implications. But the scene was still changed, the localization changed it, right? Isn't that censorship? Doesn't that mean the scene was ruined? Well, no, because above all, I think that context matters the most when it comes to localization. In Wolfenstein, we're killing racist assholes, and Fire Emblem Fates, we're helping sexually frustrated party members. These things are the same in all versions of the game, censorship or not, but the context of the scenes and how they're changed in the censored and localized version is ultimately what's the most important. In the former's case, the censorship doesn't really make sense to me because the context wasn't altered, so who cares? But in the latter, I can at least understand where it's coming from because this is a scene that definitely needed to be changed because it prevents Corrin from being confused with a date rapist and actually improves their character in the new context. 
Examples like Fire Emblem aren't really where localization's a problem for me, which is why I don't think games don't have to suffer from localization. The only time that localization really bothers me is when it genuinely ruins a scene. Great example here, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, a game for the PSP. It was yet another journey following the legendary big boss as he tries to prevent nuclear war. And if you know anything about Metal Gear Solid, you know that there's a few staples of the series that pop up in just about every single game, such as sneaking in boxes, Metal Gears, Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear. and button mashing torture sequences. Peace Walker was no different, but one of these things of the three was different from the others. You see, Peace Walker was an interesting situation in that it was released on the PSP. It wasn't the first Metal Gear game to do that, but it was the first one that the series creator Hideo Kojima directed on the portable console. The thing about this game and the other PSP titles is that unlike most of the main games, it received ratings aimed at teenagers instead of adults. And the reason behind this mostly had to do with its market. You see, in Japan, the PSP is mostly played by kids and teenagers, not adults. Combine that with the fact that the Metal Gear Solid series in general isn't as popular in Japan as it is in the US, and you've got a bit of a hard sell. The result to fix this was to tone down a lot of things that were normally in Metal Gear, such as excessive blood and strong language, but Konami felt the need to take it one step further. In the game's signature torture scene, Big Boss has to resist his torture at Dr. Strangelove as she shocks him with high voltage shock rods. At least that's how it is in the English version. In the Japanese version, we instead got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't edit that. That's Big Boss being tortured with laughing rods. Obviously, this pretty much ruins any chance this scene has of being taken seriously, and while Metal Gear Solid is a pretty goofy series, when it needs to not laugh, it does so in a pretty convincing manner. Sure, the context of the scene is the same as the other version. Snake is being tortured, but the execution of the localization for the Japanese market turned the whole scene into a joke. This is an example of localization of the game making it worse, all because Konami needed the game to get a lighter rating. Kojima allegedly didn't have any input on this, by the way. Do you still wonder why these two didn't really get along well in the end? I don't think games need censorship. I think the subject of localization is a bit more dicey, though. I think that as long as the localization doesn't alter a scene so much that it loses all meaning or seriousness of it whatsoever, then I guess it's fine. And after all, I can't really be too hard on localization because if we didn't have localization, there's tons of games that we now know and love that we probably never would have even gotten to play. You might agree or disagree with me, and that's fine, I'd love to hear about it. Are there any games that you've played that you enjoyed the localization for? Are there any games you feel like maybe they went too far? Write it down below. Eh, uh, not bad. We could probably push that out. We just need to put a picture of some censored boobs in the thumbnail. Gee, thanks. Hey, I'm just doing my job, pal. Anyway, you might want to pack all this up and get ready to go. Gotta get ready for the big move, kumquat. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you call me? It's me again. Thanks for watching this video. I uh, worked pretty hard on it. It, it took a while to get it all down. I hope everything came together the way I wanted to, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm just here to say that in case you didn't get it from that terrible joke that I just ended the video on, uh, this is the probably going to be the last time you see this set. Uh, we are moving soon. Uh, very excited about that and hopefully going to do a lot cooler things in the future. But uh, regardless, quick announcement, I am going to be reviewing Fire Emblem Warriors when it comes out, but because I am not a big YouTuber, I don't get advanced copies of games or anything like that, so I gotta buy a copy just like everybody else and review it that way. Uh, and plus it comes out very close to my moving date. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, that review might take a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I am still gonna do it, so. Thank you very much for being patient. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Um, 
very happy uh, with how things have been going. Uh, the channel's looking great, in my opinion. I love that people are still subscribing and watching. It's really neat. It's really cool. Uh, so, yeah. See you guys next time. Um, probably in a much cleaner environment. Bye.